welcome to my channel if you're new welcome back to my channel if you're not new today i'm going to be teaching you how you can grow from zero in 2023 on tiktok let's get into the video first things first how do i know these strategies work well i just started tiktok about two weeks ago and i've already got over a thousand followers and i'm continuing to grow using these strategies right here that i'm going to share with you and on top of this, I've also seen influencers with thousands of followers use these strategies as well in their videos. So first things first, before you start on any new platform, I always recommend that you do research about that platform. See what kind of content is already working and what kind of videos are going viral and being interacted with the most. Take in as much information as you can from other users and start to formulate how you can apply that to your specific account. But in case you don't already know, TikTok has two ways that the platform is working. It has an AI algorithm where it will send videos to you based on your interactions on the platform and the things that you like. So it's kind of targeting your audience for you, which is great as a creator. Secondly, TikTok is now becoming more and more like a search engine, similar to Google and YouTube, where users can actually search for the kind of content that they're looking for. And there's a lot of ways you can optimize your videos to make sure that they're getting seen, but we'll get into that later in the video. I wanna step into the next point which is should you create a new account? I would recommend that if you have a personal account that you're already using to interact with TikTok and videos and you're interacting with content that's not related to the niche that you're going to be posting about, then I would create a new TikTok account because TikTok has already categorized the account that you have and it's gonna be a little harder for you to grow because TikTok's gonna have to recategorize the content that you are creating. It's just a better idea to maybe keep that personal account for research purposes or just for fun and then start a new account. If your old account is getting stuck and you're not progressing at all, I would also start a new account. And I think again, that goes back to the new search engine feature that TikTok is trying to create now, where they are trying to categorize the kind of content you're creating and videos so that they can start sending your content to specific users that are interested in the kind of content you're creating. And after you decide whether or not you wanna create a new profile, you have to think about what is going to be on that profile. So when somebody clicks your profile, they're gonna decide whether or not they wanna follow you right then and there. So we need to convince them to follow us within that second that they are looking at our profile. So how can we optimize that? Well, look at your picture and make sure that whatever picture you have on there either has something to do with what you are posting about. If you are doing book talk, for example, or like talking about books on your TikTok, maybe you have a picture of you reading a book on your profile. Or if you are creating recipes, maybe you have a picture of yourself in the kitchen. That way, somebody associates you with the kind of content that you're creating. And there's studies that show when people see your face, they can start to form a relationship with you in a positive way. So just keeping that in mind, think about your profile picture, think about your profile name. So again, SEO is becoming more and more important for TikTok. So when somebody is looking up a type of content, so let's say you are a dog trainer, they can tab over to the user section on TikTok and actually find you as a user that creates that kind of content and decide whether or not they wanna follow you. So that's a really good way to get noticed by SEO and that's just putting that in your name. And just because something's in your name doesn't mean that it necessarily has to be your at or your handle. So you can have your handle be something specifically and then your name on your channel be something different. So keep that in mind. Um, so just because your name is longer doesn't mean that your tag has to be longer. And I definitely recommend to keep your tag as short as possible while still relating to your niche because then it's easier to search up and people don't have to type in a super long, complicated thing. So to simplify that, like you're simplifying a URL for your website. You also wanna optimize your bio. So a big mistake that I see happening all the time is when people just fill their bio out to fill it out or they don't even fill it out at all. And then they just post all kinds of content and expect you to understand that they are trying to be an influencer for mental health or something like that, but they don't have mental health in their bio. You don't wanna waste that space. And I think on TikTok, they only give you like 80 characters. So you really want to optimize those 80 characters in the best way as possible. So for example, if you are creating content based on social media, you might wanna just put social media tips for growth. I think that's what I have in my bio actually. Essentially, you just wanna make sure that whatever your niche is, it's in your bio so that people can decide whether or not they wanna follow you based on that. Okay, and lastly for your profile, once you get to 1K followers on TikTok, they allow you to put a link in your bio. This is super important. So when you're starting to think about what to put in your link to get people to actually click it, I did make a video about that and I will tag it below. Um, but also consider like, what would you 
click. So for me, I have a downloadable TikTok cheat sheet and I'll link that in the description box below to help you optimize your video so that it gets recognized by the TikTok search engine and featured as one of the top videos for your niche. Link is super important, especially when it comes to growing your email list because when you start to grow your email list as a small creator, once you start blowing up into a bigger creator, then you can start sending emails and do email marketing. And I've heard stories where people actually sell out of their products because they were prepared for that blowing up and going viral when they were still small. So definitely think about that also when you're creating your channel and creating videos. Um, don't be too caught up on whether or not you're getting a lot of views or going viral with every single video that you post because realistically you're not. You're going to start off getting 200 views or so, 200, 300 views for a little while until you start staying consistent and then eventually you'll get more and more views over time. But that's not a bad thing. Slow growth is not a bad thing at all. Um, I think a lot of people want to grow really, really fast. And while that does happen for some, it doesn't happen for everyone. And that's okay. That doesn't mean that you're doing anything wrong. It just means that you're growing a little bit slower. And that's still great because you're still growing. Just use those analytics and try to improve as you go. And you never know when a video will go viral because you can post something um, from a month back and it's gonna get 50,000 views later. You just didn't expect it. So never delete your videos. TikTok also doesn't like when you delete your videos because you're deleting data that they use to categorize your content. So if you're deleting videos all the time, it's not sure what kind of content that you're gonna be putting out. So don't delete videos. You never know when they can go viral. And I had a really um, great piece of advice be told to me one time, and it was basically, just because you don't like something that you create doesn't mean that somebody else isn't gonna love it because we all have different tastes and preferences. So just because it's not absolutely perfect or exactly how you want it, doesn't mean you shouldn't post it. Take it out of your drafts, post the content, leave it there and let it do its thing. If nothing else, it's allowing TikTok to read the captions, read through the hashtags, read through the text on screen and your verbiage and categorize your videos so that way the next video you post, it can understand what kind of content you're gonna be talking about on your channel. Let's also talk about your niche. So I mentioned that you wanna optimize your profile for the niche you're gonna be creating. Just because someone says that you have to pick a niche, it's not necessarily true. You can be the niche that pulls all of these things together. However, TikTok again is a search engine. And so it is going to try to categorize the kind of content that you're creating. So it's very helpful if you do or can pick a niche and keep that kind of specific so that way it can send your videos out to the people that are looking for content related to that niche. If you can't pick one single niche, try to narrow it down to two or three things that can somewhat relate. If you really, really can't pick a niche, then think about your audience. Why are you creating in the first place? What kind of audience are you trying to attract? What kind of content do you think that they want to watch? If you're not sure how to tell what kind of content they want to watch, you can always do like reverse search engine research where you type in the content you're thinking about creating and you scroll down and you can see what other people have already searched for related to that niche. And you can create videos based on that or you can create videos based on what's already viral and popular. Okay, so now moving into actual video content. There's three typical types of content that any social page should have. First is evergreen content or content that's going to last pretty much indefinitely. So for example, this video is going to be pretty evergreen because the tips that I'm giving you are going to be relevant a month later, six months later, a year later, um, until another big change occurs. And it typically includes things like educational content or recipes or things like that. And then there's another kind of content that is trending content, which is also very important on the TikTok platform because TikTok, if you don't already know, operates a lot on trends. There are sound trends, video trends, dance trends, all kinds of things. But I do recommend that if you're going to be creating trending content, you relate it back to your niche in some way, shape or form. You don't wanna just copy paste what everybody else is doing and it has nothing to do with what you're doing. So actually there's a trend going on right now and it's like the Sound and it says, what you looking for? We got what you looking for. And there are people like stomping and clapping. And I saw a law firm execute that trend really well. And they just got their lawyers together and they were stomping um, saying, what you looking for? We got what you looking for. And the caption put, um, 
when you need a law firm to back you or something like that. I can't remember what their niche was specifically, but they related it back to themselves and executed it really well and it went viral. So that was awesome to see um, a business do. And I really liked it. If I find it, I will tag it in the description box below or tag it to this video. But so try to just keep in mind when you're doing trends, it's good because it'll likely get you more views, but you wanna make sure that it's related back to your account because if you're going viral for things that have nothing to do with what you're posting about, it's not really gonna translate to the kind of audience that you want. And lastly, you wanna create content that allows your personality to shine. So this is not necessarily going to be content that's gonna get you the most amount of views, but it's going to help you create a real authentic relationship with the people that are watching your videos because they can see your personality and a lot of people will follow you just based on that. And on that point, I want to just say that if you feel that you can't start your channel because the market is oversaturated or people are telling you, why are you going to do that? Everybody's already doing it. Please ignore that because nobody has the unique personality that you have to offer. That's why you don't go and copy paste what other people are doing and you try to create your own content with your own unique personality because you're going to provide your own value that other people are not able to provide because they're not you they don't have your perspective so definitely don't listen to people they're telling you not to create because there's already content created on that topic just do it anyway and you never know where that can take you for you to be successful on TikTok, you need to be consistent um, and that goes for any social platform really as well doesn't necessarily mean you have to post five times a day, every single day in order to be successful. However, I do think that there is a correlation between how often you post and the quality content that you're posting and how fast you're growing, especially as a beginner, because you have to understand that when people are scrolling through TikTok, they're seeing hundreds of videos in a day. And if you are only popping up one time, they're not going to remember your face unless you have some superior kind of content that you're creating. So you wanna make sure that they can see you as many times as possible so that they can start associating you with the kind of content that you're creating and start getting an understanding of your brand and whether or not they wanna follow you and support that. So that's just a rule of advertising in general. They always say there's like a rule of seven where your brain has to say something seven times in order for that piece of information to stick. So that being said, you're going to be better off posting more frequently, especially as a beginner for at least the first three months if you can do what you can do and stay consistent with it if that means you're posting monday wednesday friday then post monday wednesday friday but just stay consistent on posting and creating content but i think there is a correlation to how often you post and how fast you're going to grow and that makes sense again right because people are seeing your content more you have more content out there and people are more likely to follow you if they see you more often than once and start associating your brand with something that they want to see and with the kind of content that you should be creating should it be a long video or should it be a short video i get that question all the time Right now, I believe TikTok is on its way to pushing a little bit more of longer forms of content. I heard that they released an option to create 10 minute long videos on the platform. I have not been able to access that option yet, but I am very curious to see if that is true or not. And if that is true, then I definitely do believe that there is going to be a shift towards pushing longer forms of content out. And I've seen multiple creators talk about that. So I do think that that is something that they are thinking about doing if they're not already doing it. It's gonna depend, I think, on the video specifically itself and also your niche. Try to see what other content creators are doing and what kind of videos are working for them. Like think about what you wanna interact with and how long you wanna watch a piece of content. Don't make your viewers wait for the next thing. There's no benefit to having like dramatic pauses on TikTok. It's better if you have jump cuts actually, where you are cutting to the next piece of information as quickly as possible, because mind you, people are scrolling through. So think about your attention span and other people's attention span is probably going to be somewhat similar and you wanna create content based on that. Also, when it comes to engagement and analytics and things like that, I've definitely noticed that short forms of content tend to have a higher retention rate than long forms of content. And again, that makes sense, right? Because a lot of people are only going to pay attention for a certain amount of time. And if they're not specifically interested in the content that you are talking about or the way that you're presenting it, they're probably not going to watch the entirety of the video that you created. 
So just because you have a lot of views, for example, on a longer form of content, but not a high, high retention rate, it's not necessarily a bad thing. It just might mean that the audience that was shown your video may not be interested in watching the entirety of the video because they are not that interested in the content. Or it could mean that you are not doing a great job of keeping your audience hooked and retained through the entire video. So that's something important to think about. Also, a big thing that plays into your retention rate is whether or not you have a good solid hook in your video. Hooks are super important. Everybody is talking about it right now. You have three seconds to hook your audience before they scroll on to the next video. And so if you don't have a good hook with a good follow up right after it to keep them watching, then they are likely just going to scroll past it. So I definitely recommend a hook adding a title and trying to optimize for SEO. If you are confused on how to do any of that, I created a free downloadable TikTok cheat sheet and I linked it in the description box below just for you. And it is super helpful. It is how I went through all of my videos and made sure that they were optimized and recognized the TikTok search engine algorithm. And I know that it's also helped other creators increase their views as well. So again, it's linked in the description box below. Definitely download it, it's for free. I think it could help you out too, if, especially if you are struggling with any of the strategy or hooks or anything like that. But of course, if you have any other questions or comments, leave them below so that I can get to them. I'd love to help you. And then lastly, when it comes to creating content on any platform, I also recommend that you review your content, check out your analytics and see what's working and what's not for you. Think about your goals, right? I definitely recommend setting goals every month um, for your content so that way you can stay on track and see how you've performed. Did you meet your goals? Did you meet your expectations? Why or why not? So definitely think about those things. Review your content. I think that's super important and it's going to give you a lot of feedback on the kind of content that's working for you and the kind of content that's not. And I do actually have another tip and that's to use like this quad. I call it the quad strategy. I'm not sure if there's an actual name for it, but basically the idea is that you do everything I provided in the downloadable TikTok cheat sheet to optimize your video for SEO. After you post your video and do that, you move on to the next quadrant and you basically just respond to five other videos that have to do with your niche or your target audience, leave comments, like the video, save the video. And then if anybody comments on your end, you're going to move to the next quadrant and comment back as fast as you can. That way you can boost the engagement on your video and you get more comments. So more people are likely to comment. And I also recommend that you comment on your own video first because there is a theory that people are afraid to be the first comment. So you should just be the first comment first and then nobody will be afraid and it'll open up the dialogue and discussion for people. And then lastly, um, just take a break and rest. There's no scientific research behind that, but I think it's good for your mental health to not be checking constantly on your video to see how many views it has. Cause like I said, you could go viral at any minute with any video, you never know. There's no set way that the TikTok algorithm works. There's only things that we have figured out over time and I'm sure it's going to continue to change. So in general, I hope this video helps you guys. I have a whole playlist dedicated to TikTok growth and social media growth, digital marketing tips, all of that. Definitely check those videos out as well. Give me a like and subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next video. Love, Lauren.